Hi everybody, this is Lars Venje and welcome to another Love the Effects tutorial. In this video I'm going to talk about how I created the comp for my project Drop Zone in Nuke. If you want to take a look at a reduced, 3 frames long version of the script, you can become a gold supporter of my Patreon page and get access to it. You can also watch the Houdini tutorial for this project on Love the Effects. I'll leave the link to it in the description of this video. Let's have a look at the trailer for this project to see the final shot. Before I continue, I want to thank the people at Side Effects, Foundry, Chaos, Action VFX, and the Pixel Lab for supporting me with this project. Thank you guys, I really appreciate your continued support. I also need to mention that this is not a beginner or step-by-step -step tutorial. I will talk about the most important aspects of the creation of this project. Okay, so here we are in Nuke. Keeping a good structure in my scripts is very important to me. As you can see when you take a look at this note tree. And I think using stamps in Nuke is a no-brainer, which is always scary to see when you select the whole node tree. Of course, I'm not going to talk about every section of the script. Instead, I'm going to give you a quick overview of it. And then I'm going to talk about a few particular areas of this comp. At the top of the node tree, you can see all of my assets. Then there's the sky, which is just a polyhaven HDR on a sphere, rendered with the scanline render. After that, you can see the 3D rendered scene with a lot of modifications. Then we have some action VFX assets like fire, fog, burn marks. And down here we have some exploding debris. Here you can see a heat distortion setup for the thrusters of the dropship. Then I created some more fog and smoke in these two backdrops. In the next backdrop I created some trails for the dropship, or wingtip vortices as they are also called. Then I created some god rays. some lens dirt, some lens flares, lens effects, and a color correction. Alright, that was it for the overview of the script. Now I will talk about a few particular areas. This section right here is very important for me to talk about. It is all about layers and beauty rebuilds with V-Ray. At the moment V-Ray for Solaris has a bug when it comes to beauty rebuilds. But I will show you how I worked around this bug. The problem is that when you put V-Ray's beauty layers together of a scene that has lights within volumes or refractive objects, it is likely that they don't match with the rendered beauty layer. Here you can see my hidden gem project layers plus together. And here is the rendered beauty layer, that looks noticeably different. Here are the drop zone layers. And here you can see the rendered beauty layer, that also does not match to the beauty rebuild. Here's a way to get rid of this particular V-Ray problem. And I'm only going to zoom into this setup, so you can recreate it if you need it. Instead of walking you through it, I'm going to explain it to you with a simple analogy. And this goes for the beauty rebuild and the light groups rebuild. V-Ray's bug creates an image that does not match to the rendered beauty layer. And with this setup, you are just removing the part of the image that is wrong and then you are adding the right part into it to make it match to the rendered beauty layer. That's all. It looks complicated, but the idea behind it is simple. And then, once you have fixed this issue, 
you can combine your light group setup with your beauty rebuild setup and have them affect each other with a simple divide and multiply operation of two merge nodes, which is exactly what I did in this project. And that gave me a lot of control over the look of my shot. The next topic I want to talk about is the general layering of the shot. Here is how I put the shot together. And here is how I should have put the shot together. The reason why I didn't do it the way I was supposed to do is because of my former missing knowledge about splitting my scene into layers with V-Ray for Solaris, which I have now thanks to the awesome people at Chaos. And the second reason was because of the long time it took to render the scene, which was around three weeks of non-stop rendering, and I did not want to do that again. Because of this suboptimal layering in my script, I had to do a lot of masking, especially at the end of the shot, when the ground dust covers half of the frame. Just keep that in mind and learn from my mistake. Because in the Houdini tutorial of this project, I am showing how you can split your layers with V-Ray for Solaris. Now let's talk about a few areas of this comp. Instead of going through the whole main setup of the shot, I'm just going to show you a few before and after frames, give you an idea of the overall structure, and show you a few particular parts of it. In the beginning of the shot, it is easy to see the depth haze, the subtle depth of field effect, the modifications of the thrusters, and the slight lighting changes I added to the shot. When the dropship is turning around to start its landing maneuver, there are quite a bit of changes in the comp that are clear to see. Overall, I just tried to make the scene look a bit dirtier and less CG-ish. I think that worked especially well with the retexturing of the ground, the burn marks on the buildings, and the retexturing of some areas of the dropship. The thrusters that also get a different look which really helped to make the shot look nicer. Now let's go back to the node graph. In general, you can see the light and beauty rebuild sections in these two areas. In these two sections, I added most of the modifications to the shot that you just saw. And in this upper right area, I created most of the mats for the modifications on the left side. Now let's have a closer look at the thrusters of the dropship. Here you can see how they looked straight out of Houdini. And here you can see the steps I took to modify their look. I used the thrusters light group to get rid of the old look. I also added some light effects to the shot that you can see when the thrusters start to burn the ground. And in these two areas, Most of the retexturing happens in this setup. With the help of a rendered UV pass, ST map nodes, and some textured cards that I rendered with the scanline render. That was it for the main CG setup. Now I want to talk about the atmosphere and some effects layers. I added a bunch of Action VFX assets to the shot, and I also used some smoke and fog setups from Nukipedia like the PXF smoke box, or setups that you can get directly from within Nuke by using the fog box toolset. To create some holdouts for most of these elements, I used a very dirty hack that I would not recommend you to use in production, but sometimes it works for my personal projects. The dirty hack is to create a position to points node to get a point cloud of your scene so you can use that as a dirty deep pass that is rendered with the scanline render and then you can use that output as a deep holdout. Now I want to talk about the action VFX assets I used in this shot. Here is a comp version without them so you can see the difference they make. I especially like 
the fire embers at the end of the shot that are coming from the burning building. Looking at these two versions, I know that I could have finished this project without the Action VFX assets, but I think it looks way cooler and more exciting with them in it. I would have loved to create and render a CG particle system for the fire embers and smoke in Houdini, but I still have to learn how to do that and there is just something about real footage that is very hard to recreate. Sometimes 2D assets are not ideal because of the camera move in your shot, but in this case it worked just fine. Here is the Action VFX fire setup that you can take a look at to see how I placed the Action VFX assets with cards in the 3D viewport. Having a point cloud of your scene with a position to points node or a deep to points node is necessary to get a good position reference of your scene. Although fine tuning the positions of these assets was quite a bit of work, it was a lot of fun and I'm very happy with the result. The Action VFX exploding debris setup is really simple as you can see here, but it took quite some time to adjust the timing and velocity of this asset to synchronize it with the rendered explosion. But having the exploding debris in the shot just added another layer of realism to it. If you want to check out the Action VFX assets library, you can click on the respective link in the description of this video. Now let's have a closer look at the dropship trails or wingtip vortices as they can also be called. It would have been nice to know how to create them in Houdini, but I found another way to create them in Nuke, which is nothing more than a projection of some dropship geometry on a card, so I could create and animate the trails in 2D. With a time echo node to see the trail's supposed position, some noise, some roto nodes, some distortion, and quite a few masking operations. It's not a huge part of the script, but I enjoyed creating these trails and think they give the shot a nice touch. I felt the same way about the God Ray setup, which are just textures on cards but I think they also gave the shot a nice touch. I reused this setup from my hidden gem project. And that was it. Of course, I could do a three or five hour tutorial about the script, but if you want to take a closer look at a reduced version of the script, you can become a gold supporter of my Patreon page and get access to it, along with many other projects I have created. All right, that was it for this Love VFX tutorial. I really hope you liked it. If you want to see some more of these videos, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. Again, this is Lars Vemje. Thanks for watching and goodbye everybody.